Hey y'all, so my last video I briefly touched about the um, bout of sepsis I had a few months ago, and I kind of wanted to go a little more into detail about it. Um, sepsis is a killer if it's not taken care of properly. Um, a lot of people end up in the ICU due to septic shock, and quite honestly, it's been one of the scariest things that I have been through. Um, I had a, I don't know if you can see this, I had a hickman in my chest and a hole formed in an area where they couldn't repair it, so I had to have it changed out. When I had it changed out, I had some unexpected complications, and those complications required another hickman to be placed and that one removed within 24 hours of the original one of the other one being placed so um then everything was fine and i went home um started noticing noticing some swelling in my incision site up here now what they do when they do a hickman is there's an insertion site and then this incision here is where the line is pulled up and then put into the vein um, or artery I should say um, but the incision site up here was starting to swell I was in a lot of pain um, and I had started running a low grade fever and my mom wanted to take me to the emergency room um, I kept begging and begging her to wait until the next morning, you know, just let me sleep one night in my bed, you know, I didn't want to go, um, but she wouldn't let it down, and it's a good thing that she didn't, um, I had become septic with a bout of MRSA, and it was one of the worst strains of MRSA that you can get, and they had told me if I had in fact waited till the morning to... Um, come in that I would um, have more than likely been in the ICU I'm trying to find a picture of what happened Let's see So, while I'm doing that, signs of MRSA, or signs of infection, obviously, are swelling, redness, warm to the touch, any type of fever, um, any type of unusual discharge, whether it's, you know, like yellow pus, draining, things like that, um, but when I went into the ER, they pretty much knew immediately that my line was infected. Um, I hope this can show. Okay, so let's see if it evens out. So, I'm trying to find a way for the screen, maybe if I dim the screen a little bit. So, that was my line when we went in. Um, and then, about two hours later, if you look up here... You can see how swollen it is. Oops. And that swelling was just in two hours. And that's right up here. So it was a very bad case in MRSA and it was hitting hard. Um, so they ended up pulling my line and I was on IV antibiotics for about two months almost um from april until the end of may um but 
the point is that, you know, you need to listen to your body. Anytime something happens, whether it's a paper cut, something as simple as a paper cut, or as big as surgery, watch out, you know, and if it's really bad, don't try and deal with it alone at home. See your doctor, go to the emergency room. You know, I spiked to 105 degrees, um, a fever of 105 at one point. And at that point, you, you know, your organs, your brain, they're all just trying to compensate for being overheated. Um, but I was in such severe pain. Um, I could hardly move. They pulled my Hickman almost immediately and started me on antibiotics. And that's how I ended up with my pick because I needed to stay on IV antibiotics. Um, and I went through a good, I'm still huge, like, I still have scars. I don't know if you can see them. Um, from the IVs, I was blowing through IVs at least four days on top of two to three blood draws a day. Um, they didn't want to put any more permanent IV, like not even a midline or pick until my cultures were clean and they were sure that, you know, there's not going to be anything that would grab onto the line. But, um, that's why if you have a central line, you have to be extremely careful. Alcohol swabs, washing your hands, hand sanitizer, um, not letting a nurse or phlebotomist open the syringe with their mouth, um, which I've had people do before, you know, not having them reuse a syringe or place it an open syringe on the table and then pull it, pick it up and try and use it on you. These lines go straight to your heart. And so the ch if you end up septic and your line is compromised, you can end up with the infection in your heart. And that's extremely dangerous on its own. Aside from how dangerous sepsis is. Um, but that bout of sepsis is really what kind of shook me into realizing, you know, I try and do a lot of stuff for a lot of people, and I'm not doing the stuff that I need to do for me. Um, I needed to be more active, so I got um, a Samsung Gear Fit, and we got one for my cousin for her birthday, and I'm getting one for my mom for Christmas, and we, um, we, what's it called? We, uh, sorry, we, um, compete, so it makes me get up and move and do more so I'm not stuck in bed all day. Um, I have talked to my godson's parents. I have talked to local spoonies in the area, local friends in the area about not saying no anymore. Um, and I feel like if I can take care of myself, I can take care of others better. So, you know, while the sepsis sucked, I was miserable. I wanted to go home. I literally spent like three weeks in the hospital because of the sepsis. Um, it woke me up. Um, but again, if you have a fever that hits over 100, if you have redness, swelling, pain, warmth to the touch, a combination of any of those five things, contact your doctor. You don't necessarily have to go to the ER right away. Um, but if you have a central line, I really recommend that you do. Um, it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, I know a few people who have passed because of sepsis in their central line. Um, and it was just caught too late. So, if you can do something, do it. Call a friend. 
call an ambulance if you have to. Um, any of my local girls, you can call me. I'll be there in a heartbeat unless I'm in the hospital myself, which hopefully won't be anytime soon. Um, but it's really important to take care of any incision, wound, whatever you want to call it, um, and try not to get an infection. It was scary. There was times that I didn't think I'd be leaving that hospital. And I knew my mom and my dad were scared to death. And them being scared to death even worried me more. And it's a burden that I don't want to put on them again. And a burden that I really, really don't think I could go through again. So I'm doing everything and anything I can to prevent it. Um, I developed a clot when I pulled my um, Hickman. So I've been on blood thinners. But hopefully at the end of the month, my blood thinners will be gone and I can go back to a chest line. And um, I'm going to talk to my GI about ethanol locks. Um, their alcohol locks to, you know, prevent, you know, bacterial growth, um, and infections. So, you know, like I said, monitor yourself. You know your body. I knew something was wrong. I just didn't want to go in. Don't delay, um, because once you get to a certain point, you roll downhill even faster, faster than you could even imagine. Um, when I went into the ER, there was barely any, like there was some noticeable swelling. And not even two hours later, the picture that I showed is what my incision site looked like. So, you know, do anything and everything you can to prevent it. But sometimes, it's just not preventable, so just do what you can to take care of yourself and make sure it gets taken care of. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and if there's anything that you guys want me to cover, any questions, please feel free to contact me.